the Father. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Good evening to everybody. We thank you again for joining us here at Calvary Baptist Church for our Wednesday evening Bible study. We're so grateful for this opportunity that 
we have to come together and to share each week as we study the Word of God. It's such a blessing to be able to uh, come to you and for you to join with us. Again, as we continue in this season or this period of time of separation, uh, we certainly thank God for technology, which allows us the opportunity to come together uh, uh, via all of these social media platforms and the use of technology. So we're so grateful for that, and we're grateful for you who have taken the time to join us on tonight. We certainly want you to know that we're continuing to pray for you. We're continuing to cover you. Uh, we're continuing to just love on you through the Word of God, through worship, and through fellowship. And we know that that's so important. I just want to put this out there real quickly before we go to the Word of God, uh, that most of the members of CBC should have re received a letter from me by now, my weekly update. Hopefully you have an opportunity to read it. Uh, we'll be rolling out some plans for our return to in-person worship uh, this week. So be please be sure that you're checking your email. I want to encourage you, if you don't see it and you know you're on our email list, that you please check your spam folder uh, because sometimes it may have been delivered there. So I just do want you to encourage you to make sure that you're checking your email and that you are uh, reading the updates so that you can stay posted on how we're navigating this uh, pandemic and all this happening. So please do that for us. I want you to know we're praying for our country, praying for our nation uh, in this season of unrest, this time of unrest, the things that are happening uh, all across our country. Uh, it is gripping all of us uh, in, some, in some ways that perhaps uh, for many uh, you never could have imagined uh, but we're still hopeful. We're still hopeful. Uh, God is still on the throne. God is still in control. And so we just want to uh, let you know that we are praying, uh, even for our nation, as we uh, go through this period of unrest. We're just so, so thankful for uh, those of you who are peacefully protesting. Uh, of course, we certainly don't condone any uh, looting and destruction of property. Uh, because that does none of us well, uh, but we certainly support peaceful protesting uh, because that's how change happens uh, anywhere and in anything. Until you challenge what is, uh, you won't see the change that's necessary for us all to be better. And so we certainly are grateful for that right, that privilege, uh, and we thank those of you who are who are out there on the front lines, and of course, uh, our churches are on the front line of this as well uh, because I still believe that the church is the prophetic voice uh, that God has placed in the earth to speak to injustices uh, and to speak to those things that uh, mistreat and misappropriate uh, individuals. And so uh, we're just so thankful that we continue to have this space, this sacred space, to hear the voice of God and to be better people, and to love and respect the dignity that God has given to all of us. I want to jump into our lesson tonight. I certainly want to jump into our lesson tonight real quickly. Uh, we're moving along in our discussion on spiritual gifts, uh, and we have titled this series Divine Design. Divine Design, and it is the development, the deployment, uh, and the development of our spiritual gifts. And so we've been having a wonderful time in the study. I hope you've been enjoying it. I want to encourage you that if you have questions, to go ahead and send those questions to us. Uh, we will be answering them at the end of our time together tonight. Uh, and we'll be, if, just in case we don't get to all of them, uh, we will be making sure that we do get to them. So you can begin to go ahead as we begin to talk and things come to mind, Go ahead and send those questions to us, and we'll have an opportunity to address as many of those questions uh, as we possibly can. So we're going to continue our journey uh, through the study of spiritual gifts. And as we've been emphasizing throughout this series, spiritual gifts are for the functionality of the church. They are for the functionality of the church. And God, by the Holy Spirit, utilizes these gifts to give us a way to minimize chaos uh, and confusion as we function. So the spiritual gifts allows us to make sure that we're in the places that we need to be 
doing the things that we've been individually gifted to do uh, for the benefit uh, of the local church. And so as we go through the lesson tonight, I want to uh, go back to Romans chapter 12. That's where we've been uh, at least for the, the last uh, eight weeks of our time together. Uh, Romans chapter 12, uh, verses 6 through 8. Of course, we've, hopefully you've been reading it, you've been studying it, you've been looking at it. Uh, we won't take the time to read it tonight, but uh, hopefully you have an opportunity to do that. We've been discussing what is called motivational gifts, motivational gifts uh, for the past few weeks. And there are about two gifts left to discuss on this list, uh, administration and mercy. I realize that we've been moving at a slow pace, but I think it's really important to understand, uh, to really understand the gifts and to really understand where they fit as it relates to our place in ministry. And so I've been moving slowly on purpose. Uh, I did not want to do this as a survey Bible study. I know it's gonna take a little bit more time than normal uh, to get through it, but I did want us to take our time because you really, uh, uh, you really have to understand how important it is for us to be doing what it is that God has called us to do and to be in the place that God has called us to be. And you really have to understand that the church can be strong, even much stronger than it is now, when we're all operating according to how God has uh, gifted us to operate. So part of this whole overarching idea is for us to capture our purpose and to understand our purpose as it relates to our gifting. So we've discussed prophecy, we've discussed uh, ministry or serving, we've discussed teaching, we've discussed exhortation, we've discussed giving. Today we want to deal with the spiritual gift of administration. Uh, you may see it as leadership uh, or administration. Uh, we can use those terms interchangeably uh, for our time together tonight. So grab your Bibles, Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. Let's jump in and talk about leadership administration tonight. The gift of administration is the divine enablement to see what needs to be done, to set goals, and then to attract, lead, and motivate people to accomplish the work of the ministry. I know that's a a loaded definition, but every part of that definition is critical to understanding the gift of administration. So let me give it to you one more time. It is the divine enablement to see what needs to be done, to set goals, and then to, and this is important, attract, lead, and motivate people to accomplish the work of the ministry. Now, if you are, if you analyze that definition, you will notice two very important things about that definition. That definition, and we'll talk a little bit about it as we get into it, that definition implies two things in particular. It implies the ability to get something done and it requires the mobilization of human resources. I really need you to catch that. This is one of those gifts where you don't just do something, but it involves others as you do it. So that kind of makes this gift slightly different. I know that all of the gifts involve uh, us doing various things for various people, uh, in various ways. But when you're looking at this gift, it involves not just a function, but it also involves human resources and your ability to mobilize human resources. And so the gift of administration is the ability to coordinate the activities of others for the achievement of a common goal. So it means we're moving in a direction, 
But we're not moving by ourselves. We're moving, having mobilized human resources, human beings to help us accomplish one common goal. I was thinking about a scripture that could help us to uh, uh, really capture uh, what, what, what this gift is about. And, and, and the Spirit of God gave me uh, Luke chapter 14, verses 28 through 30. If you get a chance, you can flip over there quickly. Uh, in Luke chapter 14, verses 28 through 30, here's what it says. It says, for which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down, count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish it. That's the gift of administration. That's part of the gift of administration. Now, we all know you can't build anything by yourself. You, you can't build anything by yourself. Uh, you need some help, whether you need a plumber or an electrician or a carpenter or a mason or, or something of that nature. You can't do it by yourself. So you have to be able to mobilize your forces. You have to be able to uh, calculate your cost. You have to be able to do some of the analytical work involved. And so this gift is unique because it is analytically driven. It is analytically driven. This is one of those gifts that require, and, and, and this is where you have to catch this. That's why I'm going to, hopefully you catch this. I'm going slow with this tonight. This gift is unique because it requires natural information to function. Let me try that again. This gift is unique because it requires natural information to function. When you're dealing with some of the other gifts, it's usually um, divine revelation involved. It's usually something that the Holy Spirit will give us in order to function in the gift. This gift has a natural dimension. <clears throat> it has a natural dimension to it. It has a natural dimension to it. It requires natural information to function. Some of the other gifts are completely discernment driven. This gift, however, requires both discernment and information. Lord, I need you to make sure you're getting this. It requires both discernment and information, natural information. This gift is informed through both your heart and your head. This involves your heart and your head. This gift is driven by the Spirit through the discernment of numbers, measurable goals, vision forecasting, targets, and other pieces of data. So there is a, there is a natural dimension to this spiritual gift. This, gift. this gift builds off of responsibility and results. A person with this gift is always focused on what needs to be done and then how best to make that happen. So that's important. So let's jump into some of the meat of this gift. Let's just jump into some of the meat of this. When you talk about the gift of administration or leadership, whichever word you want to use, the Greek word for this gift is kubernesis. That's the Greek word for this gift, kubernesis. And it means to steer, to pilot, or to govern. It means to steer, to pilot, or to govern. Now, this is a unique gift that refers to, and the word comes to us out of the environment of, of steering a ship. There is, this, there is this, this nautical, if you will, relationship uh, to this word, kubernesis. It is, it is the ability, or it is to steer, to pilot, or to govern. And it refers to somebody who steers a ship. 
It carries the idea of a person who has the responsibility of directing a group of people toward a goal or toward a destination. So again, there's this whole natural dimension that's involved in this spiritual gift. Now, I know, I know that sounds a little bit simple, but it's the implication that makes this gift a little complex. I know that's simple. Kubernetes, steer, pilot, govern, unique gift, refers to somebody who steers a ship. Sounds pretty simple. But there is some complexity involved in this gift, and that's where we get to the meat of it. Here's the complexity. Anybody, anybody, I need you to really hear me, hear, hear what I'm saying to you, hear me very closely. Anybody in a management or a supervisory role is a leader. We can all agree. If you're in management, if you're a supervisor, that means you're in a leadership role. But here's the complexity. Not everybody in a management or supervisory role exhibits authentic leadership. And this is what I need you to catch. You got some people who are in the position, but by virtue of being in the position, uh, they are a leader. But just because you're in a leadership role does not necessarily mean that you exhibit authentic leadership. Lord, I got to try that again. Just because, just because you're the one that's sitting in the seat does not mean you exhibit authentic leadership. Just because you have the title does not mean you exhibit authentic leadership. And you can understand what I'm talking about here in a few minutes. Um, one, of the, one of the qualities of a person who's gifted in administration is not just about getting things done. Here comes the complexity. Watch this, don't miss it. One of the qualities of a person gifted in administration is not just getting things done, but being able to build a team. Because you got to remember, there's a natural resource involved in this gift. There is a natural aspect involved in this gift. So it's not just about getting things done, it's about being able to build a team which speaks to a person's relational skills. Oh, Lord, here we go, here we go. Watch it, watch it, watch it. This is not about getting it done, but this is about building a team so that the team can help get the task completed. And in order to build a team, you got to have relational skills. Lord have mercy. So that means when you start talking about, do I have the gift of administration? You don't, just because you can get it done don't mean you have the gift of administration. Because, Lord, y'all not here. It, it, because watch this, watch this. If, if you're getting it done, but let me not get ahead of myself because I'm getting a little excited here. So, so watch this. Again, one of, the, one, of the, one of the qualities of a person gifted in administration is not just getting things done, but being able to build a team Catch that, make sure you write that down, which speaks to your relational skill. Now, we have a lot of people, y'all, who might be able to get things done, but look at all the casualties they leave behind and all of the destruction they cause in the process. So you can't tell me that I have the gift of administration just because I can get things done but I'm leaving a string of dead bodies behind me as I get it done. Lord, y'all not, not understanding what I'm saying. So, 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 so there is the gifting aspect. There is the spiritual aspect, but there is the natural aspect. There is the human resource aspect. And I got to talk a whole lot about that because a whole lot of people have been claiming to have the gift of administration and you're killing people trying to lead them. Okay, let me, let me go. Let me watch this. Watch this. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me not go get too ahead of myself. Um, uh, uh, here, here is how I can help frame this for you. Here is how I can help frame this. Here it is. I, I was reading an article uh, in preparation for this particular lesson. Um, and I, I encourage readers to lead, uh, to always read. I always encourage leaders to read. Uh, you need to read. Um, 
reading is fundamental. I, I was reading an article entitled um, The Four Elements of Great Leadership. The Four Elements of Great Leadership. And I think they are applicable to the gift of administration. I think they work for us as we talk about the gift of administration. What are those four? Number one is coaching, not directing. Coaching and not directing. The second element is being adept, is being adept. And we'll go back and we'll look at each one of these uh, tonight. The, the next one is respect. Ah, Lord, help me right there. Re respect, that's, that's the third one. And then the fourth one is good communication, good communication. Now, I know you think you already know what I'm going to talk about when I say good communication, but I, I, I'm always I'm, 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 I'm willing to I'm willing to put it out there that that you may know some of what I'm going to say about good communication, but what not all of it. So that that means you need to stay right there and stay tuned. So the first one, the first one, four elements of great leadership: coaching, not directing. Uh, the author of the article uses that word directing. Uh, I would change that just a little bit. I would tweak it just a little bit. And I would say coaching, not dictating. That's the word I would use. He, he, he said directing. I would change that and tweak it and say dictating. Now, watch this. Watch this. Um, a good leader, a good leader, a good leader, a good leader is a teacher and a coach, not a dictator. Can I say it again? A good leader is a teacher and a coach and not a dictator. Part of the gift of administration is development. It's development. And you're going to understand why that's important. Because as you build a team, you have to develop the team that you build. Because usually when you're building a team, everybody comes to that team raw. They come to that team maybe understanding some of, the, some of the particulars or some of the mechanics of what it is that they need to do. But sometimes they come to a team not fully understanding the aesthetics of what they do. And that's important because, again, you got to be careful about just getting things done. And it's not always in getting things done, but it's how you get those things done. And so a good leader is a teacher and a coach, not a dictator. Because if you're gifted in the area of administration, that means you understand the importance of development. You understand the importance of development. That development, if you're taking notes, write it down. That development includes two things. It includes, number one, challenging, and number two, nurturing. Taking notes, write that down. Watch it. The gift of administration is developmental. Part of the gift of administration is developmental. That development includes nurturing and challenging. Now, keep in mind that spiritual gifts, according to Ephesians chapter 4, are for what? To equip the saints for the work of the ministry and for the building up of the body of Christ. That's development. Lord, help me. That, that's, that's development. That means that this gift is not just functional, but developmental. So, it cannot be just about getting to a destination only, but are the people who took the trip with you better because they were on the ship with you? Try it again. It's not just functional, but it's developmental. So it cannot be just about getting somewhere but are the people who took the trip with you better because they were on the ship with you? Okay? So that would imply 
that there is something wrong. Uh, when you're trying to get where you're going, but the people on the ship with you can't wait to get off the ship. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all not, y'all not, y'all gotta catch me here. Yeah, I can't. They, they say we on the ship. We trying to get something done. But Lord, let this hurry up and be over so we can get off the ship because we sick of you. Okay, okay, y'all, y'all, y'all. Watch that. It, it, it would imply that there's something wrong when you can get things done, but don't nobody want to work with you. It, it, it implies that something is wrong when you can get stuff done. Yeah, you can get it done. You can get it done, but by the time you finish getting it done, can't nobody stand you. So there's something intrinsically wrong when it's functional but not developmental. So, so you have to be, a person with this gift is a coach or a teacher, not a dictator. Coach, teacher, not a dictator. Now, let's go to the second one real quick. The second, the second element that we need to look at is a person with the gift of administration is adept. They're adept. What, does, what do you mean, Bishop? As I mentioned before, good leadership is flexible leadership. Good leadership is flexible leadership. If anything can happen, how do you adjust to the unexpected? You, you're, you're, you're the leader. You're the leader. If something happens, how do you adjust to the unexpected? Leaders, and this is simple, y'all. This is real simple right here. Leaders make decisions. Leaders make decisions. If you're not making decisions, you're not leading. Leaders make decisions. And sometimes quick decisions have to be made using the available information. Sometimes you have to make a decision and you don't have time to wait. You have to make a decision then. That means you have to use the information that is currently available. Now, are all your decisions going to be popular? Absolutely not. Is everybody going to embrace the decisions you make as the leader? Absolutely not. Is anybody going to like the decisions you make? Absolutely not. Are you going to make some mistakes? Sure you're going to. Yes, you're going to. Because usually, if you're a good leader, you're making decisions using the current information you have available, especially if it's a decision that needs to be made uh, immediately. So it, there's a possibility that you can make a decision based on what you have in front of you, and then later on something comes up, some other information becomes available that you did not have that may contradict the decision that you had to make, but you didn't have that information when you made that decision. So you're going to make some mistakes. Surely you're going to make some mistakes. I've made some mistakes. I've been, I've, I've been pastoring more than 30 years, and I've made probably hundreds of mistakes in that process. So you're going to make them. You, you have to learn how, as a leader, you got to learn how to get up, shake it off, and keep it moving. Okay? You, you, you got to be able to say, you know what? Mm, I messed that one up. I, I, messed, I messed that one up. And sometimes God can be talking to you and telling you some things, uh, uh, and you miss it. You, you can miss it. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You can, you can miss it. Your humanity uh, can obstruct your spiritual vision and cause you to miss it sometimes. It happens because none of us are perfect. And I need to make sure you understand that. Just because you gifted don't mean you're perfect. Oh, Lord. So you, you thinking that because I got a gift, I shouldn't make a mistake. No. Because sometimes your humanity will obstruct your view of your spirituality. So sometimes it can get in the way and you think you're operating in the lane that God wants you to be operating in. And you don't realize you're in the wrong lane until you see some stuff coming at you. Okay, y'all hear what I'm saying? You, sometimes you don't know you're in the wrong lane until you see some stuff coming at you and it causes you to know, oh, I'm in the wrong lane. It ain't that God ain't been trying to warn you, you just ain't been paying attention. 
Doug, and you're going to understand that in a minute because people with this gift are task-driven. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. So watch this. Adept. Good leadership, flexible leadership. Good leadership is flexible leadership. And let me say, you can't be a leader if you wear your feelings on your sleeve. You can't do it. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit. If, if you're sensitive, uh, uh, you, 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 need to, you, need to, you need to not be a leader. If you gotta, if you gotta, if you gotta run, if you gotta run to bishop office every time somebody say something to you, you ain't ready to be a, you're not ready to be a leader. You're not, you're not ready. Your 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 skin is too thin. You, you can't have thin skin and do this, okay? Because people people hit who they see. Okay, y'all miss me. And if you on the front, that's who they see. That's who they hit. Okay, all right, all right. So, 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 this is where discernment is critical. Here it is. Sometimes you have to lead as you follow the Holy Spirit. Some, sometimes, some, sometimes time does not afford you, again, all the pieces of the puzzle, but because you have a process and you can rally people, things can happen. That, 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 that's the adeptness of this gift. Flexibility, 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 flexibility. I can't say it enough. Flexibility. Uh, that leads to this next element. I'm just kind of going through these uh, as quickly as I can. Um, this next element, respect. Lord Jesus, respect. Jesus. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Yeah, there it is. R respect. Watch, watch this. Watch this. I don't care how good you are at what you do. If people don't respect you, you can't lead them. I'm going to try it again. I don't care how good you are at what you do. You can brag about it. You can talk about it. You can write it on a t-shirt and wear it every day. If people don't respect you, you can't lead them. Respect is a, write this down, it's, it, it'll work on your refrigerator, write it down. Respect is a two-way street. It's a two-way street, and it must be given to be had in return. That, that, that element of respect Lord, help me. That element of respect, it's what's going to provide you with the ability to rally a team. Because if you're the leader and you need a team and don't nobody respect you, where you going to get a team from? Okay, all right. So when people know that your leadership is not about you, but includes their best interests, that means they can trust your leadership. You, 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 you can't get people respect. You didn't work people's fingers to the bone, and then you get to the end of the task, and you take all the credit for the work. Oh, okay, okay. When people know that your leadership is not about you, but includes their best interests, they can trust your leadership. I, I, lo I love a story. There's a story in 1 Samuel chapter 22. If you ever get a chance in your devotional time, uh, read it. That, there's a story in 1 Samuel 22 when David is on the run from Saul and he ends up in the cave of Adullam. The, the Bible says that, that when his soldiers find out where he was, they go where he was. They go where he was. When they find out where he was, they go where he was. And even though they had their own issues, because the Bible says they were distressed, they were in debt, they were depressed. But the Bible says David became their leader. He became their commander. You got to read the story. It's a good story. And for the next few chapters, they're able to achieve some, 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 great, some great exploits in the next few chapters. Why? Because you can't build anything without regard for the people that you need to help you. They came to him broken, but him as a leader, he could build them back up so they could fight. 
Y'all not hear what I'm saying. You, it, there's a developmental aspect. People may come to you dysfunctional and broken, but if, you, if you're a good leader, you're able to develop them and turn them into the team that you need in order to accomplish the things that you're trying to accomplish. Unless you got some kind of spell on people, you can't lead people when people don't like you. You, 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 can't, you, you, you just can't do that. You can't do that. So there is, there is a respect factor that you have to take into consideration when you're talking about this. Let me, let me, let me, let me go on, go on. Um, part, of, part of having the gift of leadership, here it is, don't miss it, because I told you a good leader uh, is good at communication. You, you remember me saying that at, at the beginning? Uh, communication was one of those four elements of, of good leadership. Well, part of having the gift of leadership is being able, here it is, to lead by example. Mm. And I know you thought I was talking about communication like you understand communication. But can I tell you something? Communication is not just verbal. I said it again. I'll say it again. Communication is not just verbal. It's not just the stuff that come out of your mouth. Communication is what you display with your behavior. Try it again. Communication is not just the stuff that come out of your mouth. It's the stuff that come out of your life. My, 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 grandmama, my grandmama used to say, you can make your mouth say anything you want it to say. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Uh, uh, she used to also say, a lie don't care who tell it. So, so you, can, you can make your mouth say anything you want your mouth to say. You can do that. I was about to go somewhere, but I can't do it. Watch this. You, you, can, you, can, you can make your mouth say anything you want it to say. But just because your mouth say it don't mean it's right. So you, you cannot, as a leader, when you start talking about communication, it's not just what comes out of your mouth, it's what comes out of your life. So you're talking about this, this, this spiritual gift. Again, we, we, we got to really understand the gift because you got to have a, I'm going to say it like we used to say it, it, it over in holiness. Um, you you, you got you you a gift, but you got to have a life to go with it. You know what I'm saying? You got you to have a life to go with the gift. Because some people, some people, some people, some people may be gifted in an area, but they, they ain't got no life to match it. So watch what happens. Watch what happens. When you're talking about communication, you got to lead by example. Here it is. You can't ask people to do what you're not willing to do. You, you, you want folks to pull up their sleeve and work. Uh, you gotta, you gotta, sometimes you got to jump in there. You got to sometimes make up for the deficiency. Sometimes you got to make up for the shortage. You didn't plan on it, but as the leader, that's what you do. You, you, make, up for, you make up for the shortage. So good, com good communication involves listening. It involves advising. It involves directing. It involves motivating, it involves teaching, and it involves coaching. Can I get to you again? Good communication involves listening, advising, directing, not dictating, directing, motivating, teaching, and coaching. That's good communication. So, Having the gift of administration is far more involved than mere function. Far more involved than mere function. What's the question, Bishop? Here, here's the question. The question is, can you get the ship to the harbor without killing the crew. Can I try it again? Here's the question on the table. Can you get the ship to the harbor without killing the crew? 
Okay, let's, let's look at some of the dangers. Because when you talk about the gift of administration, you have to be able to balance between function and development. And you have to be able to know and assess when you need to do either or. You need to, you need to be clear on when you need to give directions and the clarity of those directions. But you also need to be able to recognize when your team, when your crew needs you because they are stuck, if you will. It could be emotional, it could be spiritual, it could just be struggling. But because they are part of your crew, your team, you've got to be able to develop them. So you have to be able to understand uh, people versus task. People versus task. Or the balance between people and task. So what are some of the dangers? One of the dangers of this gift is, as I mentioned before, lacking the discernment or the ability to recognize between function and development. Function and development. Sometimes you can be so focused on the task that you forget about the people. You can be so focused on the task that you forget about the people. People have to know, if you're going to be their leader, people have to know that you care about them as much as you care about accomplishing the task. They have to know that. They have to believe, and you have to exemplify to them that it's not always about getting it done or completing it, but you don't want to, you don't want to put task over people. So when people start feeling like you care more about success than you do them, then you start to lose followership. Don't nobody want to follow you. They don't want to follow you. Because when they start rolling the credits, your name is the only name they see. But it wasn't you that did all the work. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? So, 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 so people start feeling some kind of way. When, when they know that you care about success, don't, 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 don't use me to get what you want. Um, let us be in it together uh, from the beginning to the end. Okay. So you don't want to lose your fellowship. Um, I'm trying to see. I, I got about I got about a minute a minute left before I want to get to the end. But I do want to throw this 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 very quick story in right quick. Um, uh, a few years ago, if you remember, the economy changed. The economy changed um, a couple of years ago. Everything started going down. Uh, people were losing stuff, houses, jobs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and one of the first places to get hit uh, was a church. It was a church uh, because people had to decide between, you know, giving and eating and those kinds of things at that time. And so when we had this, this economy turn a few years ago, I had a pastor friend of mine uh, who just built a building, uh, and he ended up losing his building. He, is, he, he did. He ended up losing his building over this. But, but, but what was so interesting is uh, when you looked at his team, the team that he had built uh, over the years that he had been at this particular church, he had built this stellar team. I mean, this stellar team. He had um, some people from corporate America. He had some people uh, who, were, who were really passionate about their spirituality and, and all these things. So he had built this stellar team. And some of the people that were on the staff, they had some of the best minds you could have in area. They were some of the best people you could find in the area on finance and human resources and, 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 and all of those kinds of things. And so he told them one day, we're going, to, we're going to go rent some office space and we're going to set up shop in the office space and we're going to keep moving. Uh, we're going to rent some worship space for our people to, to worship on Sunday before our weekly operation. We're just going to go rent some office space in a strip mall, and, and that's where we're going to operate Monday through Friday. And because you got to remember, they, they, they lost the building. And 
I don't want to oversimplify the story, but I don't want to give you too many of the details of that confidential conversation. But when we talked about it, I asked him a question. We were talking about it, I asked him a question. I said, could you have saved the building and laid off some staff? Because when, 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 he, when he hired these particular people, uh, they came to him already making good salaries. Uh, they took pay cuts to come, but because they believed in the vision of the ministry, uh, they took them and they came. But they didn't, they didn't lose their passion, they didn't lose their drive, the same, the same passion and drive they had when they had corporate jobs, they brought that same passion and drive to the church. And so I asked him, I said, I said, I said, man, could you have saved the building if you had laid off some staff? And his response to me is, it, it, it absolutely blew my mind. It, it blessed my life. His response to me, he said, with the team I have, I can get another building. Y'all didn't catch that. I, I was, I, he said, with the team I have, I can get another building. And long story short, long story short, y'all, they, they did that. They now in a building twice the size of what they had, all of that stuff, all that stuff, uh, uh, really, really being blessed uh, in that. But he understood leadership. You don't, you don't sacrifice people unnecessarily because those could be the same people that's going to help you regain what you lost. So people with this gift get frustrated when things don't go like they want them to go. That's, that's, that's one of the shortcomings. Um, people with this gift can become structure dependent rather than spirit dependent. Um, and I often hear people res refer to the church as a business. I know you've all heard it. You know, church is a business, church is a business. Uh, and I don't and I don't not, not agree with that because the, the, you have to understand that there is an aspect of it that's numbers and, and analysis and data and all of those things. But, but I'm a, that I, yeah, I have my own idea about that because, yeah, it may be that, but it's also a spiritual institution. And sometimes God will give directions that the structure can't accommodate. And you have to be flexible enough to follow the spiritual direction uh, when the natural structure does not agree with the spiritual directive. I hope I'm making that, making that clear. Um, a church is not just driven by its numbers and its data. It's driven by the Holy Ghost. And if the Spirit of God leads, you have to have enough faith to follow. Because sometimes God does not give you all the detail of the journey. He just tells you, if you trust me and follow me, I'll make sure you get where you need to be safely. And sometimes that doesn't fit into your structure. But you have to remember that the church is not just a business. It's a spiritual institution that operates by faith. Okay, okay, okay. A, a person with this gift, see, when you got the gift of administration, um, you, you're, not a, you're, not, you're not afraid to attempt the impossible. You, you goal-oriented, you goal you're well-disciplined, you work best under pressure, you're not a procrastinator, you, you might be a little bit of a perfectionist. And you got to be careful, though, because one of the other dangers of having this gift is pride can infect your gift. Pride, pride can get in your gift. Okay, I have about, I have about nine minutes, and um, I, got a, I, got a, I got a new facilitator today, uh, my normal facilitator, uh, Elder William Guy, uh, our assistant to the pastor for children, youth, and young adults here at Calvary Baptist Church 
is celebrating with his son who's graduating from Dover High and, and we're so excited about, about Nate. Nate is doing some great things. Um, he's going to be going to Delaware State University. He's, he's a wonderful, amazing athlete. And so we're just really excited about that. And so we're celebrating uh, with our assistant to the pastor and his son, Nate, uh, as they uh, have virtual graduation. They're having virtual graduation today. So we're really excited about that. So we're going to stop right there. And we're going to talk about mercy next week. Um, and I know you probably want to tune into that one. Uh, but we'll take a few of the questions that we have uh, tonight that may have come in. And one of our new deacons, uh, he ain't that new, but he's one of our new deacons, uh, uh, Brother Bobby Horton is going to uh, help us tonight with some of the questions that we have that have come through uh, Facebook and other social media platforms. And Bishop, this was an outstanding lesson on Amen. administration and leadership, yeah. uh, which fits right in what we're dealing with today. Yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, I have to thank you because we had a lot of good questions come in. Great. That's great. Uh, That's great. That's just great. to jump right in, one of the first questions was, can gifts come in seasons or do you have your gift forever? Oh, good question. That's a good question. Um, I do believe, and, and normally when I get further into the lesson, you'll, you'll, we'll talk about it. But I believe we have what I call dominant gifts and subdominant gifts. I think we have gifts that we always walk in, but I think God also gifts us uh, for seasons and for times. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example, um, pastoring, shepherding. Uh, every time I've ever taken a spiritual gifts inventory, uh, that's always my highest scoring uh, gift uh, and because it's something I always walk in. I'm, I've always walked in the office of a pastor um, so that gift hasn't changed for me oh, ever since I've been taking spiritual gifts, inventories. But there are some other gifts that do, that do shift a little bit. Uh, prophecy is not one gift that I walk in all the time, uh, it, but it's seasonal for me. Uh, sometimes it's much stronger. Sometimes it's not as strong. Um, so I would think it would be one of my sub, one of my sub gifts. Uh, under shepherding. Uh, and then there's some other gifts that, that fluctuate, um, but always my highest gift is, um, is the gift of, of shepherding. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, and you, you spoke of all the gifts we've been going through, and one of the questions that really stood out for me, when you don't respect your leader, how do you stay motivated to not only do the right thing, but also the work that you've been called to do. That's difficult. That's, that's real difficult. And I, I, I have a heart for people uh, who struggle with that. But the one thing I always tell people to do is pray about a situation. And I know, I know that this sounds like the, the, the church language kind of thing to say, but it's, it's real because for a lot of reasons, because um, sometimes people need people who are praying for them even when they're in their era, because even when they're in their era, they need to be covered until God corrects them. And sometimes as believers, we got to be careful about leaving people in their era. If you know, do you understand what I'm yes, saying? Yes, yes, yes. One of the things that they taught us when I was being consecrated as a bishop is we have a responsibility as a bishop to preserve the unity of the church, but to protect the teachings of the apostle. Not but, but and. To preserve the unity of the church and to protect the teachings of the apostles. When you hear a person who's teaching in error, if you leave them in error, they're spreading that error. You understand yes, what I'm saying? Yes, yes. It, so, so if you leave them teaching the error, 
you leave them spreading it. At some point, the error has to be corrected. And it's the same way with people who are in leadership that you don't respect. Um, until God releases you, now God may release you, but until God releases you, you may be, you may be that buffer that keeps whatever error that leader is operating in from wrecking everybody else. You may be the thing that keeps them from wrecking everybody else. So you have to be very prayerful about that. You have to be very prayerful. That's a, that's a fine line to walk. Hard line to walk. Yeah, it's a fine line to walk, but you can't, you can't, you, at some point, you got to address it, because that's the other thing we don't want to do. At some point, you got to address it, and you got to say, wait, hold on, can't do that. That ain't right. That ain't God. That ain't biblical. But you got to do it with respect. The Bible always tells us to do what? Tell the truth in love. love. I got to tell you the truth. I love you, but I got to tell you the truth. I got to yeah. tell you the truth. Let me ask you, which, which gift do you feel? And you, you, you spoke about the, the, the four, especially in the gift of administration. Uh, which do you feel is more important? Coaching, respect, being adapt, or good communication? You know what? I think, I think coaching, the developmental aspect of it, is, is always going to be at the top of the list because I think all of the other one, all of the others are are ingredients, but I think that first one is, is important because as a leader, as a leader, you should always be about strengthening. You should always be about edifying. You should always be about encouraging. You should always be about those things. Uh, and I understand the respect is important. The respect is important. I understand all the other things are important, but I think one of the first things God calls us to do God calls us to make disciples. He calls us to make disciples. And so I think for me, uh, that's the number one thing. That's, that's the number one thing. Uh, another live question. Uh, do you think res is respect determined by a few people or is it determined by the majority of people? I don't think, I don't think those degrees are even... I don't think they really even play into the equation. I think respect is, respect is about having integrity because when you start talking about doing the right thing, how, how do you really determine the right thing? For example, some leaders may make some decisions that the majority of the people don't understand the decision they made, but the majority of the people may not have access to the same information that the leader had when he made the decision. You understand yes, what I'm yes, saying? Yes, yes, yes. And so I think, you know, when you start talking about respect, people start talking about, uh, you know, what they like, what they don't like, all that kind of stuff. But I respect the person who would do the right thing, even if nobody agreed with them. So when you start talking about, uh, is it determined by a few? Is it determined by many? I think that's, you know. I don't, I, don't, I don't fully understand that that's even playing into the equation uh, at all. Yeah. I don't. Because I think if people trust you, even if they don't like what you do, if they trust you, then they'll say, you know what, I don't, I don't know about that. But because I think I can, tr I believe I can trust my leader and I believe my leader hears from God, uh, let's, let's, let's ride it out and see where, let's ride it out and see where it takes us. And I think he said that word uh, that went along with respect for me yeah. was integrity. Yeah. I think it is one of the greatest words ever, integrity of a person. I'm it totally agree with you. to the essence of who you are. That's right. So it, it, I know it, we're it, about to run out of time, Bishop. Yeah. And uh, I, I know you had a lot of people who were watching who started dancing when you spoke <laughs> of respect and started <laughs> spelling it out to yeah. Aretha Franklin. Yeah. And so... Uh, we've gotten quite a bit from it, and, and if you're watching, we ask that you continue to send your questions, yep. uh, and we'll answer them next week, time permitting. And uh, again, this has been a great lesson. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you for, for being with us tonight. My certainly, pleasure. certainly. Thank God for Brother Horton. He's one of our one of the great men of our church, and we certainly appreciate what he brings to uh, to the ministry. He and his family and his and his and his wife, and so we just so grateful for, for them.
being a part of our family here, and being a part of our leadership uh, here at the church. Um, we know we're out of time, so let's pray, and, uh, and then we're going to see you back here next week. Father, we thank you today for our time together. We thank you for how you speak to our hearts, how you speak to our situations, how you talk to us even when we don't know we need to be talked to, how you help us even when we don't know we need to be helped. And so, Father, I'm praying for every person that's listening on tonight. I'm praying, God, that you will allow this word uh, to saturate their spirit, uh, to get down in the very core of who they are, and to understand that it's not just about getting it done, but it's about how we get it done, how we're developing people, and how people are better uh, because they are under our leadership are because they have, they have allowed themselves to follow us. I pray, God, that those of us who are leaders, that we will not take our places and positions for granted, that we will not operate as if we are indispensable, but that we will always love you first, God, and then love the people that we lead, and that they will not just hear it from our mouth, they'll be able to see it shown from us as we interact with them, as we lead them, and as we take them to the place that you would have us to go. Thank you for those who are yet dealing with this pandemic. I pray for health. I pray for healing. I pray for wholeness. I pray for those who may be experiencing loss, whether it be loss of loved ones, loss of wages, whatever it may be. God, I pray that you will be strength right now, that you will be that balm in Gilead that makes the wounded whole and even heals the sin-sick soul. Continue to bless and keep us and until we come back together again. God, we thank you for who you are and who we are to you. And we bless your name for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.